So recently I shot an image of the cone nebula in the Hubble palette, um, sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen. And if any of you guys have ever done that, you know when you go to uh, stretch that image, your stars get all kinds of crazy colors and shapes and halos. So I also uh, did a little upgrade on Pixin Sites where I now have Starnet++ in, as a plugin, I guess. They work together, it's in there. And so in this uh, processing tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how I use that tool to take the stars out and save them, do all my color stretching, and then put them back in. And uh, wow, such a game changer. I've used that term a lot, game changer, a lot. So uh, let's get over here to uh, the inside computer because I'm outside getting ready to do some more shooting. So it's like a dual night for me. I'm gonna do a video and image at the same time. Uh, so let's get over here to uh, the office computer and uh, show you how I use PixInsight and Starnet++ together. Okay, here we are in the Astro Den, in the lair, in the processing uh, domicile. And not only am I I'm going to process this uh, cone nebula and show you Starnet++ and how that works, but I'm also got a little Nina action going on. Look at that. Some uh, sulfur, six minute sulfur on uh, the heart nebula. I shot some RGB on it, and uh, or HA RGB, so now I'm shooting some sulfur and some oxygen to kind of round that one out so mr multitasking that's what i'm doing anyway it's not what we're here for what we're here for is the uh the cone nebula so if you can see i've got uh oxygen data i've got sulfur data and hydrogen data and this is straight off the presses this is straight out of deep sky stacker uh, but because I did these individually in Deep Sky Stacker, um, you'll notice they are not lined up at all. So, first thing we're going to do is minimize these. Minimize our HA. We're going to use our HA as a reference frame, and we're going to come up here to Process. Whoops, All Processes. And over here, alphabetically, to Star Alignment. Reset it, and we're going to drag and drop our ACE, our HA data in as the reference frame. You can highlight the sulfur and oxygen, move them over here in this little screen, and we hit the Apply Global button, and that's going to align the oxygen and sulfur to the hydrogen. And then we can close these two images down because we'll have two new images. Cool. All right, it's done. You can just close that down. So uh, let's hit our screen transfer function here. So there's our oxygen, screen transfer, and our sulfur. So these two here, we can right click and say uh, delete selected icons. So I like, it may sound silly, but I like to crop, individually crop and do a background extraction on each individual uh, image before combining. I just find that in the end I get a better product. So it appears that the oxygen or actually the sulfur has probably the worst cropping or the uh, stacking artifact edges. Let's see, but look at our hydrogen here. We've got this really wonky looking clip here and we've got something funky here so we're going to use our hydrogen as a template for the dynamic crop so we're going to crop these first and we find that up here in process geometry dynamic crop so you want to click the reset button and the active image will get a gray box around it and we're going to bring this in we're going to clip this considerably I don't know why that had such a bad artifact. Anyway, something like that. And if you've seen in my other videos, you can just take this instance where all the data is stored. 
we'll drag it down there accidentally. <laughs> Let's drag it off here to the side. So our oxygen just got, just got cropped. <laughs> uh, so we can close that tool. Yes. Whoa, that's loud. And okay, oxygen. You want to be that way? You want to be first of the party? All right, let's drag that instance over and drop it on to the hydrogen. And we're going to drag it over and drop it on to the sulfur. Let's minimize that. So now you see our sulfur and our uh, hydrogen. Or, yep, sulfur and hydrogen. Sulfur and oxygen have been registered. HA is the original. Um, so now what I want to do is do a background extraction on these three images. And I'm going to use my hydrogen as a template. So I love the background, the dynamic background extraction. So it's in process, background modelization, dynamic. I almost never use the automatic. Um, so click on the image to get it going here. And I'm going to leave the default sample radius at 30. Probably going to knock down the number of samples to 8 per row. I'm going to increase my tolerance to 0.8. I'm going to lower my sample weight to 0.4. And I like yellow boxes. They're easier to see. Um, oh, and I'm going to increase my smoothing factor to 6. And I'm going to click Generate. So what you're looking for in here is you want to make sure you've got a good pattern of samples all the way in the corner. And a lot of people just do these randomly, but I like to generate kind of a grid system and just move them. Um, which you, if you're subscribed to this channel first time here, you've definitely seen me do this before. So what you're looking for is you're wanting to move these little sample boxes around to the darker spots of the image and off any major stars. You get a couple stars in there, but you really don't want to pick up too many stars in your sample boxes. So like this guy right here, we want to move him completely off this nebulosity that's out here. So this guy, what do we do with him? Let's just delete him. You find that you have, uh, if you can't find a spot for these little guys, then uh, just delete them. That's kind of the tough part when you're processing nebula images. Like especially this one because it's pretty much nebulosity, wall to wall, just like carpet used to be. Oops, I put an extra one in there. All right, I think we got them all set. Let's move in here real quick. As you can see, I've just kind of moved these guys around to find the darkest parts of the image. You can also increase the box size to let's say a hundred and I've used that method before too it makes a really wide box but it also works pretty good because you're just kind of averaging out what it uh, samples. But for right now I'm going to be very selective. I'm going to scroll back out. You can see I've got a good mix in here. Um, definitely found some of the darker parts. I feel like I'm missing anything and what you're really looking for is you don't want to sample like right here because it'll actually just completely almost wipe out that nebulosity or really darken it up so you don't want that. Um, so we're going to come down here to the correction portion of it, hit the drop down list. We're going to set that to division and then we're going to hit the green check marker. And it's going to create a new image. We're going to use the screen transfer function here to preview that image. Not a big change but definitely gave it some more contrast. Um, I'm not going to get super aggressive on it but I like it. So we're going to minimize, minimize that. Now it says uh, HA test DBE so we know it's had a dynamic background extraction. Go ahead and kill that uh, the model, the background model. Before we do that we're going to drag this instance off and now all of these boxes that you see here in their exact location within this frame are all stored here on this process too. Um, so we're going to close dynamic background. Seems kind of weird. Close this image down. And we're going to open up our S2. Right there. 
and just double click on that process and look all of our little samples are right here right back and the reason we use the HA data is because why it's got the most structure in it so we know where to place these samples better so let's hit the check mark see what we get We're going to preview the image better, get a good contrast, good flat image. So I like that one. Let's uh, close that down. Close it again. I wish there was a way to reset it. If there is, let me know without closing it. I don't know. So let's open up our last one, our O3. Very little structure, but still a lot of signal in here. Double click on it. And we want to make sure we don't have any red, any of these guys are red. If they're red, you want to increase this tolerance. But for right now, everybody's green, everybody's in the go. So let's hit that check mark. Open up the image here. Ah, much better. So three quality image images. Close down the background model, close dynamic background extraction. Close that image and we're done. All right, so now we're going to combine these three into the Hubble palette using the channel combination tool. And all these tools, if you've watched any of my videos before, this is like a default. This is a project that I have. So the screen transfer function, which is just your preview mechanism, loads in. And these, like I said, these are my heavy hitter tools histogram. And I'll probably use every one of these, and you can see them, but the best place to find these for me is coming here to process all processes and guess what everything is alphabetized right on all right so we want to combine these three we're going to open up channel combination we're going to reset it we're going to take our ha put it in the green make our s2 put it in the red and our o3 into the blue and then hit the apply global minimize it and here's our image. I want to make sure that if this is linked, if that box is highlighted here, we want to unlink it and hit the screen transfer function. And there we go. There's our image. Nice and green. The Incredible Hulk would be proud. Okay. <laughs> All right. So right off the bat, there's a lot of magenta in this image that I want to kill. But I can't kill it until I actually apply this stretch to this image. This is just a preview. All right, this is not actually. So if I hit F12, look, it goes black. So I'm going to hit the screen transfer function again. I like the stretch. I like everything about it. I like what it's done. I want to make this permanent. And the way I do that is to open up the histogram transformation. I'm going to take all that data. I'm going to move it up here and drop it on this little bottom gray bar. I'm going to hit F12 to kill the uh, screen transfer preview stretch. And I'm going to take all that information and apply it to the image. And boom, stretched. And we know it stretched because if we hit F12, it should go white. Yes. So there it is, stretched with some magenta in here. So before I pull these stars out, I want to kind of work on them a little bit and, and get some of that redness out of them. You can kind of see it, especially around here. You see that little magenta glow. I've actually had way worse. But some of the background's got a lot of magenta in it. This really isn't that bad, but we're going to pull it out anyway. So we're going to come over here to Script, come down to Utilities, and we're going to go to Color Mask. We're going to click uh, Magenta. We're going to blur it and click OK. And it is going to create a mask or an image of everything that's magenta in this combined image that we have. All right, so here it is. And if you minimize it, you see the letter M on the end. That's M for magenta. So let's drag this mask. So now I everything that you see here is is in this information on this tab so you can just drag it off i'm going to drag it over here and I'm going to put it on this tab boom now we've got a mask let's minimize it we're going to use it again let's push it over here um we're going to right click on the image come down to mask 
and go over here to show mask. So our tab is still orange, which means the mask is applied, but uh, now the mask is like invisible so we can actually see the image. So let's open up our next tool here, which is which is not channel combination, but curve transformation. Open that up. It's already set to red. Let's click this little circle right here that gives us a real time preview. And we're going to come right here in the middle and we're just going to drag it down. So if I push it up, see how red the image gets? We're going to drag that down. Right about there. I don't need to get too aggressive. Let's pull down some of that blue just a little bit. And we're going to click the square button, see it says apply. We're going to apply that that uh, curve stretch to the image. Go. Cool. So let's close the real-time preview. Reset our curve transformation. And go to mask and say remove mask. So now, <clears throat> let's minimize this. Now what I want to do is my stars, just with that one single stretch, are in good shape. Not too overblown. They're not funky. You don't have a bunch of star halos around here. Uh, but I want to pull them out because I really want to work on this, the nebulosity of this image. And that's where uh, StarNet, it within Pixinside is bad to the ass. Anybody ever say that? Bad to the ass? I don't know. Uh, if you if you first time and you're loading this image up, you're going to have to go to the uh, SourceForge website and download the StarNet++ file. And you're going to have two files in here. You're going to have uh, RGB StarNet weights and mono StarNet weights. You've got to put those two files into the Pixinsight library. And then when you click this little wrench, it allows you to load those two files into these two directories here. And you need green check marks. You want create star mass checked. So we're not only are we going to remove the stars from this image, but we're going to make a copy of all those stars on a star mask that's going to set down here. So let's drag it over, drop it, drop it like it's hot. God, date myself. All right. All right, cool. We are, uh, we're done. And who, oh, and look at that nice little note from uh, Patrick Dubé. Thanks Patrick. Sorry. Got to move your note though, buddy. Uh, <clears throat> so here's our stars. Right here and we pulled them out so let's minimize it so now look at that like is that not cool or what I mean look I mean we really don't care about this right here but it's just a awesome spooky looking image with no stars but now without the stars I feel like I can really crank on this thing and really uh, really work these colors all right so we already have our magenta so let's create some more color mask up here and we're gonna do them in the order that I manipulate them we're going to come back up here to script and utilities and color mask and we're going to create a cyan mask we're going to blur that to three click ok Let's see what this pops up oh and by the way if you try to create these color masks on a non stretched image or a, a linear image then you'll get black so definitely got to stretch the image first uh, so here's our cyan mask. So one thing I want to do to this is because the cyan doesn't really ever have a lot of structure in it. It's usually just more of that real um, passive blue in the background. I'm going to uh, blur this image just a little bit before I minimize it here. So I'm going to open up convolution and convolution basically blurs. It doesn't basically. I say basically a lot so just get over it. It blurs your image which actually creates a smoother uh, mask. So open it up, um, let's reset it, hit a real-time preview here, and then we're just going to push it. Actually, let's push it on the top level. That's it. See, it's just a little bit blurry. Let's apply that blur. Minimize convolution. Close our real-time preview, and there's our mask. Let's push this over here. Now let's create a green mask, which ought to be uh, pretty bold. So script utilities color mask green put the mask blur to three <clears throat> all right our green mask just cool in itself minimize that and we're going to do one more mask we're going to go here to script 
utilities, color mask, and we're gonna do a yellow. And I found that these yellow masks within these narrow band images like this really are enhance these little highlight details. See them right in here. Really good to give the image some depth. So don't forget your yellow mask. See what I mean? It's just kind of the highlights of the image. It's really cool. Let's minimize that. And like I said earlier, you see the last letter is the first letter of the color. Why I'm talking like I'm Mr. Freaking Rogers or Bob Ross or something. Jesus, like I've been smoking pot or something. Anyway, I'll try to toughen up. All right, so let's open up our cyan mask. Move it over here and drag it on that little band. Minimize it. And we're going to use the curve transformation tool again. Click the little circle to create a real time preview. And cyan, we want to make blue. So let's push our blue up. We're going to pull our green down. And we're going to pull our red down. Let's brighten it by going to the RGB. Create an S curve. And we're going to go in here to this B component and we're going to pull it down. And we click apply. Right off the bat, this image is pretty awesome. Look at that. Yep, let's reset it. So before we get rid of that mask, we're going to minimize or close the real time preview. We're going to right click on our image, go to mask. We're going to invert the mask. We're going to click another real-time preview here. Let's click RGB. And let's click down in here in some of these darker areas and see where the RGB intersection is. Because these are the areas we want to darken up just a little bit, right around in here. So let's anchor this curve. Two points. And let's go right here where we we're popping those lines and just bring it down. What? Awesome. Apply it. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Close the real time preview. Open up our green mask. Move it over. Apply it. Minimize. Open a real time preview back up. Curse transformation is still open. So with the green, we want that to be the gold, yellowish gold. So we start by pushing up the red. And we want to kill that green just a little bit. So we'll pull that green off just a little bit. Pull the blue down. Let's brighten it. Look at that. Let's create an S curve. I'm going to say look at that a lot. And then we want to add some saturation to that red by clicking the C component here and boosting it up. Right there. And we can also boost our lightness just a little bit. Apply that. Cool. So let's uh, minimize that or close the real time preview. Let's grab our yellow mask and apply it. Minimize the mask. Open the real time preview back up. And really just pop those yellows right there and let's boost some saturation on it lovely I like it and typically with these images um, I do like at least two iterations of this so I'm going to close the real-time preview. I'm going to go back to the cyan mask, apply it. And I'm going to run back through this again, the same process. I find it like two times is about all I need. And this is the order that I go in. That's what I found works the best. It's just that how much of this I do is always a, uh, is a how I'm feeling by eye kind of thing. And that's what you'll find. So let's boost that blue. Let's really boost it. Pull some of that red out of it. 
Let's do the RGB. About there. You're almost getting into some white now. And if you really want blue, you hit that B component and pull it down. Look at that. Pretty crazy. Now you can really, wow, and now you can really see that gas interaction in this image. So let's do that same thing again. Let's go to mask, right click on it, mask, and go to invert mask. Open it back up. We're not going to get so technical. We're just going to come down here to the lower limits and just pull that down just a little bit. Create some contrast. So I don't know about you boys, but that thing looks uh, pretty crazy. Pretty cool detail. Now you can really see the differences in the gas structure. So let's uh, grab this green mask here. Let's reapply it. Open up a real time free preview. A free view. It's free. You didn't pay a thing for this tutorial. We're just going to boost that red. Right like that. Click apply. And I think that for the purposes of this video, I think I'm done. I like it. Let's minimize that. Let's go over here to mask and remove the mask. So the way to put these stars back into the image uh, is going to require a pixel math expression. And this is image 45. So you, this is the expression here. It's uh, image 45 plus, and this 0.8 is star intensity. So 0.8 times the star mask. So for instance, if I had this at 0.5, it would, the stars would be put back in half of their intensity. Uh, so I'm gonna reduce that just a little bit because you know we always are doing star reduction in our images. Uh, so once we have this expression written, so image 45 plus in parentheses 0.8 times the star mask, this guy here. Um, then it's just a matter of taking this little triangle here and dragging it over onto our image and putting the stars back. Boom, just like that. Um, pretty sexy, astro sexy. So if we zoom in here, we're gonna see a little bit of halo around the stars where the, the brightness of the stars didn't get stretched for the rest of the image, but that's fine because we are going to come back in here to our convolution tool, open it up, open up a real time preview and look, back that down. So if you push down the standard deviation, you pretty much see no blurring. We want to blur this. And the reason we're blur blurring this is, is this is kind of like noise reduction. Uh, we have our color, we have our structure and now we don't want, we want to minimize. So if we, let's push this out here and I'll show you. I can't zoom into a real time preview. If you zoom in here, look at that. See all this pixelation? This is from heavy stretching of the colors. And the, these are smooth blends in and out. So when you come back out here, you really don't see it. But when you come in here, you know, this, this isn't a finished image, right? Because this is noisy as all get out. That is not what we want. We want to really reduce the noise before we apply a luminous layer. Dun, dun, dun. That's from a movie. Uh, so let's back out real time preview and let's push this pretty much all the way right there. Let's click that uh, apply button. We're going to apply that level of noise reduction or blurring to the image. Okay. Let's minimize convolution. Those are real time previews. Let's go in here and look. So, you know, everything's blurry and it looks like uh, you need to put your glasses on. It's smooth. So, our color here, our structure's here. You know, now we're going to apply a luminous layer to this to give some really amazing detail. So, let's minimize this image 45. I push it down here. And our detail is going to come from our HA layer because it's the strongest. Um, so what I probably want to do, which is a little quirky, I want to pull that off, create a clone, minimize it. Just in case I want to do something later, 
I haven't really manipulated it. Push this up here and watch. I'm going to do this one more time. Bam! Now this is going to be a mask. Um, so I'm going to open up the histogram transformation. I'm going to point the arrow down here at this little K band. And I'm going to push this bottom one in. You see how it's darkening the image? I want to create some contrast in my mask because I want my noise reduction. And, and that's what I'm doing this for. Is to apply, a, apply a mask to this HA layer to apply noise reduction to the background of this image. Not the higher signal portions of this image. So I like that. I'm going to take all that data once again push it up here on the little band here. You see my stretch being applied. Kill the real time preview. Take all that information over onto the image. Done. Let's minimize this. So this is a mask. That's all this is. And we're going to delete it when we're done. Let's apply the mask. Drag it over and drop it. Minimize it. Don't close it because you're using it. It's active. And you can see our highlights are here, but we don't want to work on the highlights. We want to work on a dark region. So let's right click on the picture, come down here to mask and say invert mask. And let's right click on that image again, mask, show mask. So remember our tab is orange, means it's applied and it is active. So let's do a little preview box. Let's come into one of these little darker areas right here right there Let's click on this preview As you can see even though it's HA it's pretty noisy so we're going to open up a linear noise reduction tool called multi-scale linear transformation and these are my pretty much standard settings that's why I create this project um, so that these these settings are already here and I'll have to set them each time so my lower level is getting more noise reduction than this level 4 and the target is luminance because this is a grayscale image. So I'm just going to drag it over and we'll see what it does to this preview. Alright, so pretty good. So hit the uh, Control, Shift, and Z. And you can see the after and before. I like it. I'm going to come back out here to the image and I'm going to apply that to the image. Okay, and I'm not going to do any deconvolution. Really, haven't figured that tool out yet too much, and I'm just going to use some unsharp mask later to uh, sharpen everything. So let's remove the mask. That's very important. And remember now, we haven't stretched this image. It's still linear. I hit the F12 and went dark. So I'm going to bring this this uh, K band slider in here just a little bit. Just to darken up, offer a little more contrast to the image. I like it. Open up the histogram transformation tool, reset it, take that data, put it on the bottom. You see my stretch is applied. Take that information. Oh, right, watch this when I drop it on. Watch what it's going to do. It's going to go whop white. Just hit the F12. So now it is permanently stretched. And this is our luminance layer. Let's minimize that and put it right here beside it. Open up our image 45 that we worked on. Open up our tool over here that's called LRGB Combination. Let's reset it. We're going to take that luminance layer that we just created and we're going to drag it out. We're going to put it in the luminance. And then we're going to turn off our RGB. We're going to say yes to chrominance noise reduction. We leave those. Uh, wavelet layers at default to add saturation this is pretty critical and this is more, more where you might want to play around with it to add saturation you want to reduce this value not much and to kind of brighten the image you want to increase it just a little bit I'm telling you this doesn't need to be moved much so if you're until you get used to it maybe create a small preview window and apply this and see what it does um, but right now I'm going to take that information and drag it onto this image and watch the magic happen. Oh my god, magic takes forever. Anyway, bam. Alright, 
You see now we have a smooth image with tons of detail. So it's a little dark and it's you'll find that that's going to be a little dark. So let's minimize that. So let's take this same luminance layer data that we created before we just applied to it. We're going to reapply it as a mask. I don't know what's up with the tone of my voice tonight. I swear. It's like I'm high. Anyway, uh, we're going to come over here to the curve transformation. Click uh, reset. Click a real time preview. First thing I want to do is come in here to RGB. I'm going to raise it up. Create a small S curve. Right about there. And then what really is going to brighten this image is our lightness. We're going to raise that up. Right like that. Almost kind of matching the S curve of the RGB. Click apply. Crazy. Reset it. All right. <clears throat> wow. So look, our stars are, we have good star color. We're not blown out. We're still nice and small. And, uh, but we've, but we're really aggressive with the, uh, look at that cone. I think it's crazy. And look at this, like here, it's all twisty. And where is it? Wait a minute. I gotta find it again. Oh, look at this little, whoa, curly Q looking thing in here. Crazy. Uh, okay. So now that we're at this point in the image, we're going to do one more little thing here to really kind of boost some of the detail in here. Uh, what, one thing you can do, though, is you can reapply these masks and work on this image a little bit more. For instance, I can grab the cyan mask, put it in here like this, minimize it, open up a real-time preview, kind of pop those blues a little bit. See that right there? Look at that. <laughs> and I can also come back in here to go to mask and invert the mask. Open my real time preview back up. RGB. And just bring it right down here. On the lower limit. Go. Reset it. Close the real time preview. Let's right click on it, say mask, and remove our mask. So I want to highlight or enhance some of these details in here. And the way I'm going to isolate that is I'm going to come down and use this next tool called a range selection, open it up, reset it, click the circle button, it gives me a real time preview. And I'm going to push this lower limit up right about there. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of smoothness to that mask. And click apply. Close the real time preview. Minimize range selection. Take that mask and push it over here and apply it. Let's push this down here. So if we right click on the image and say mask, show mask, you can see what's in red is protected and what isn't in red is going to get some, uh, some enhancements here. So let's right click on it, say mask, show mask, and we're going to open up another tool called local histogram equalization. And I like to leave it set at uh, 8 bit. And for this one, I want to do a little preview box. All right, like that. And let's just click it and apply it. The reason we do these preview boxes is you're not applying this, this, uh, instance to the whole image so it happens quicker and it gives you just a preview of what's going to happen so control shift and z looks a little aggressive to me let's back that down let's raise that contrast limit up reapply it i like it so now we got to go to the image and apply it to the image And when you go into the histogram resolution, when you go to 12-bit, man, this uh, this process here, you know, we're at 20% now. It takes a long time. 
so that's why I pretty much just stick to the 8-bit resolution. Alright, okay, and it's done. Uh, let's hit this uh, back button. So let's kind of zoom here and let's see what it's done. Yeah. Just kind of raise some of the highlights up, darken some of the shadows in here. Let's delete the preview. Let's do one other thing here just for the heck of it. Let's go to this yellow mask and apply it. And minimize our equalization and local equalization histogram. Oh, I'll jack that all up. Open up our curves transformation. Open up a real time preview. Let's grab that red. Let's bring that up a little bit. Right about there. Let's grab our lightness. And the lightness, what lightness does is it actually it brightens things up, but it also will kind of desaturate a little bit as well if you need it. Minimize that or reset it. Close a real time preview. Uh, yeah, I could spend a ton of time on this image, but for the video's sake, it looks pretty wicked. So let's, uh, we're going to do one more little technique here that I like. Let's go to mask and remove the mask. Is we're going to reduce some of these stars just a little bit more and I'm gonna show you my process, my evolved process in star reduction. I'm going to come to this next tool here, it's a star mask. I've got the noise threshold set at just a little bit over 3, scale to 10, large scale at 1, and these are pretty much the rest of my settings. So drag it over, drop it on the image, and sit back and wait. Alright, so here is our star mask. Let's minimize the tool. And let's zoom in here and those settings give me a good mask on every star but guess what they're little squares that's not cool we don't want squares so we're gonna do a little preview here I'm up there let's go into the preview they're little squares so let's round these off by hitting the com or convolution tool in real time preview and Back that off so we can see. So, so it's not going to completely round them, but it's, it's a lot better. better. And, and we've, we've got, got a good taper here, or a good, good uh, feather taper, taper whatever. whatever. Uh, uh, I, I like, like it. it. So, so I can't apply it, right? Because, because I'm in a preview box. box. So let's close that little preview. Let's, let's go, go into our, our image. And now, now we can drag, drag that instance over and apply it to the image. Okay, cool. And let's right click on the preview and say delete. So let's, let's maximize because I'm going to do one more trick. Actually, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So you see these stars like this one and this one and these stars here? You know, they're bigger and they're brighter. Therefore, they're closer. So when you're doing star reduction, you really want to try to leave those stars untouched, right? Because if you were flying into this, nebula I would assume that uh, you want to create some depth so these stars would appear closer than these stars in the background so what I want to reduce is a lot of these stars here but I want to keep the same brightness and size of these bigger stars really add to the depth of this image and the way I do that is I take the star mask here and I don't want to reduce any star reduction to certain stars so this becomes artistic, and, and the way we do that here is come in here to process, all processes, come out here to the clone stamp. And let's uh, hit the check mark here. Actually, we'll click into the image. I'm going to raise that radius up. I think it comes default to 5. I was using it before, so it's, let's raise it to 60. And now I just want to get rid of some of these stars. So we're going to zoom in here and hit the control button in a dark area and drag your little guy around here to a star and just click it gone the space bar to move around so control in a dark area let go of the control button come over here 
quick star. Let's uh, come back to this area and really clean that up. Hit the control button, come over to the star. Hit the control button, come over to a star. So let's kind of zoom in here. Some of these bigger stars. Control button, a dark area, drag over, move around. Control, dark area. Now it's just a matter of your taste. So I'm erasing the mask over stars that I want to leave untouched. like so. So let's hold the space bar down and then we can move around. There's some big stars down here. Grab those. Let's kind of move around. Yeah, I could spend all day, but I won't. I won't bore you with that. All right, so we've, we've kind of killed a lot of those big stars. So now we hit the check mark. And apply that and we're going to close our clone stamp and then move that off to the side and then apply the mask minimize the mask let's move it down here housekeeping people so now let's create another little preview box here let's go right in like that so hopefully i chose that star <laughs> let's go into our preview and let's so we can really see what this uh, star reduction technique is going to do. So the next, the way we do that is morphological transformation. Good lord, these words. So I think this is default, and I can't remember, but uh, we've got it set to five, twenty-five elements. These are your different uh, settings here. How aggressive you're going to be, and you can kind of use a diamond shape or a circle shape. The rest of the stuff, no clue. So let's just apply it and see what it does. So let's come in here with some of these stars here. So control shift and Z. So I like that reduction. But if we increase that to let's say nine, look at that, and did it. Let's see what that does. It's almost too aggressive. Let's apply a circle. Look at that, it just almost wipes it out. See the stars there? That's probably a little bit too much. Let's go back to five. Five elements, diamond shape. <laughs> God. So that's pretty aggressive, but I like it. Let's go back to the image. I'm gonna zoom in on this image just a little bit and apply that uh, with a little triangle here. See it work, it's pretty quick. So there, so you see these stars didn't get touched. So they're still just as bright. So that gives you some depth. You see how these stars here, now they're more prominent. At least I think they are, I don't care. Okay, delete that. And we're gonna come over here, right click and remove the mask. So now we've done all this work, but we still have a little noise. We've still got some chrominance noise and a little bit luminous noise in some of these darker areas All right so let's go in here to process we're going to come to convolution and the unsharp mask let's uh, click a preview right here in this darker area let's click into our preview and actually I don't want to sharpen that <laughs> when we come in here to process um, I was thinking of two different things at one time. Noise reduction, AC, DNR. Click the lightness. We want the lightness mask checked. I'm going to leave these settings default. And we're going to drag it over and apply it. So let's control shift and Z. See it's subtle. It definitely smoothed it out. So let's go back into our image and apply that to the image. And obviously you're not going to see this in a wide field view in YouTube land, but uh, this is, but you'll definitely see it if you're following along. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back into the preview here. Let's click chrominance. I think that uh, 
lightness mask checked. Let's apply it to the preview. Ooh, I really smoothed it out. Go back in here to the image and apply it to the image. Okay, so we can close that. Let's uh, close the preview here, delete it. Let's take this range mask here and reapply it. And we're gonna sharpen the details within that range mask. Let's do another preview. Let's preview this whole little area right here. And let's bring up that sneaky little tool that I had open a minute ago by mistake. Convolution, unsharp mask and leave it a default let's see what if that's default nope that's default so let's pull it down just a little bit and apply it man i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it it just does just a little bit to sharpen everything up you can boost that just a little bit you're talking about a wide field view image like this it's going to be hard to see but maybe you can see it now Maybe I'm close enough. Anyway, I'm going to apply it to the image now, not the preview. That's the cool thing about those previews. Is you get to really uh, test out these tools before you're, you're done with them. So let's close that. Right click on the preview, delete it, get it out of here. Um, right click on the, the image and go to mask and remove the mask. Uh, so one thing you like the last like hey, I'm done. I like this. Let's go into the histogram transformation Let's reset it Let's do this little drop down list here, and we're gonna go to image 45 and I've noticed that if I take this image into Photoshop, it's a lot brighter in Photoshop than it looks here um, And so what you want to check is you see how far off the histogram peak I am uh, I can make some small adjustments because I want to be pretty close to the peak. I want to get that the blacks not clipped. And if you start seeing this number go up, the shadows, that's clipping pixels. So you want to increase some contrast in this image, but you don't want to clip too many pixels here. So let's click a real time preview and I'll show you what I mean here. So we can brighten this image. I like to brighten it just a little bit. Now I want to take this uh, dark point slider and move it over. See, I'm not even in 1% yet. But you see, what I'm, I'm really kind of offering some contrast to this image. How about like that? And let's click Apply. Minimize it. Close the real-time preview. Uh, so I don't know about you, but... This is a bad ass image. It's just pretty incredible. And I would have spent a lot more time with, with the color detail and stuff, but this is basically it's good enough for the tutorial. So we've got good stars. We did that with Starnet Plus Plus. We've got a gray color that we used our color mask. And we had good data to start with, which helps. Um, so I think that's uh, pretty much gonna do it for this video. I think I'm done. But what do you guys think? Um, definitely leave some comments just like i got from patrick what's up patrick and uh this is like i love these now with this mono camera sorry <laughs> these little wispy dark details that you get with these mono cameras is pretty cool all right well i appreciate you watching um uh, sticking this sticking out with me here and uh i will see you on the next one clear skies and clear minds